the spirit that the president directed all ministries, departments, corporations, and agencies to digitize their services and integrate them onto the e-platform, setting an ambitious but necessary deadline at that time of December 2023. Today's event provides us with an excellent opportunity to assess the progress made so far. We are here to celebrate the milestones we have achieved, identify improvement areas, and forge new paths for enhancing the e-citizen experience. This is also a moment to reflect on how public service delivery can continue to evolve to meet the expectations of a rapidly digitizing world. I therefore take this opportunity to thank all the participants, exhibitors, and esteemed visitors for taking time to join us. Your presence here is a testament to the collective effort and shared commitment needed to propel Kenya forward in this digital era. As we officially witness the third generation ID launch, I am confident that this initiative will further integrate technology in Kenya's daily lives, enhance convenience, and solidify our nation's position as a trailblazer in innovation and digital transformation. Together, let us remain steadfast in our resolve to build a Kenya where government services are efficient, accessible, and driven by the needs of our people. Thank you, and may God bless you. It is now my singular honor to request everybody to be upstanding so that we can welcome his Excellency the President, to make his official remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, let's take our seats. Your Excellencies, Honorable Cabinet Secretaries, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A year ago, we stood here at KICC to launch our bold vision to transform the delivery of government services in Kenya. It was time to take a decisive step towards making public service delivery inclusive, efficient, fulfilling the rights of our people, and accelerating national development. That vision came to fruition with the relaunch of the e-citizen platform, an ambitious initiative designed to bring the benefits of convenience, transparency, and inclusivity to all citizens, as well as to our international clients. Today, we return to the very place where this journey began to celebrate the first anniversary of this transformative platform. This event is therefore a fitting homecoming to commemorate innovation, resilience, delivery, and achievement. Over the past year, we have broken barriers of resistance and transcended historic and systemic obstacles to embrace a digital future for our people demonstrating that the path to Kenya's prosperous destiny is indeed digital. This milestone reflects our commitment to create a more connected, efficient, and equitable system of public service delivery. When we relaunched eCitizen, we set out to dismantle inefficiencies, delays, bureaucracy, red tape, and frustrations that had plagued service delivery in Kenya for decades. We sought to end the unnecessary burden of navigating physical offices, standing in long queues, and enduring avoidable delays and inconveniences. We envisioned a Kenya where geographical disparities no longer dictate access to public service, where citizens in the most remote areas could enjoy the same 
conveniences as those in urban centers. We aspired to build a system that prioritizes integrity over corruption, efficiency over waste, and inclusivity over exclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly stand before you today to declare, and I am confident you can all attest that each citizen has delivered on this promise. Now from the comfort of your home and with just a mobile phone, you can renew your driving license, register a business name or a business entity, or apply for a marriage certificate. Tasks that once took weeks of travel, paperwork, and endless follow-ups, often at great expense. These are now completed in minutes, sometimes in just a day. One year on, e-citizen now hosts, as of yesterday when I met my speech, it was 20,855. I'm told by this morning, it is 22,515 services of a thriving community of 13 million users. Revenue collection through the platform has grown significantly, enabling the government to mobilize critical resources for public projects. E-Citizen is not just a digital service delivery platform. It represents a paradigm shift that has redefined public service delivery in Kenya and profoundly impacted lives. In many ways, both big and small public services, both big and small, our understanding and expectations of how public service services are provided have fundamentally changed. Consider the story of a mother in a remote village who once walked tens of kilometers to apply for her child certificate, often making repeated trips due to delays. Or the citizen, or a senior citizen, who struggled to access replacement services for vital documents. Today, these services are relics of the past. These challenges are relics of the past as the e-citizen platform systematically dismantled barriers to efficient service delivery. This transformation extends beyond individuals. The digital IC eco ICT ecosystem, including cyber cafes, mobile device shops, and auxiliary businesses have flourished, creating jobs, fostering wealth, and driving economic growth. The ripple effect of e-citizen are no longer confined to digital transformation. Its impact on service delivery has improved lives, strengthened hope, and opened new opportunities across our nation. By digitizing services, we have significantly enhanced efficiency, saving time and money for both citizens and government. Less paperwork translates to lower costs, Streamlined processes reduces administrative burdens, and less bureaucracy leads to faster service delivery. These savings are also being redirected towards critical areas such as health, education, infrastructure, and job creation. The transformation doesn't stop here. As a matter of fact, the success of e-citizens e -citizen has propelled Kenya onto the global stage as a trailblazer in harnessing digital technology. We have become a model for how governments can promote efficiency and competitiveness in the digital age. Consequently, I have received many requests to facilitate benchmarking exercises and inquiries for lessons and insights from several countries across our continent. As a leader, in leveraging the homegrown innovation to solve serious challenges, we are proud to partner with our friends in their own transformation journeys in different 
uh, parts of the world. But we will not allow ourselves to get carried away by our achievements and risk letting the future sweep past us while we celebrate. We must not and cannot stop here. Even as we mark this remarkable location, we are already looking ahead to map our way further into the future. We are making significant investments in better technology, expanding the national fiber optic infrastructure, and ensuring that reliable and affordable internet is accessible to all Kenyans. Accordingly, I have directed the ICT ministry to accelerate these initiatives and I had a candid conversation with the minister and her team yesterday. You understand what we agreed? Um, we are also implementing favorable tax policies and incentives to make smartphones and data affordable for every citizen so that we leave no one behind. Artificial intelligence is the next frontier and we are already witnessing its transformative potential. AI offers opportunities to reimagine service delivery. For instance, an AI-powered jackpot on e-citizen could provide instant solutions to inquiries reducing wait times and minimizing opportunities for fraud. With AI, we can move from reactive to proactive service delivery, anticipating the needs of citizens and designing solutions that meet their expectations. By responsibly leveraging public data, we can shift from citizen-centered approaches to citizen-driven solutions, ensuring that our services meet the unique needs of every Kenyan. As we celebrate the remarkable achievements of each citizen, we must remain steadfast in our commitment to innovate and the whole ecosystem around innovation and adaptation in the digital economics, economy space. I commend our ministries, departments, and agencies for embracing this policy shift and providing public services through digital platforms. Your compliance has, has seen and has been the backbone of our transformation. We will be awarding some winners, the people who have ex excelled in making uh, or in taking advantage of this digitization of government services today. As we recognize them, I have a list. Uh, I will send a list this morning. Give me my phone. I was sent a list this morning of people who are still mangamangaring. Yeah? Um, and I want to um, put them on notice. The people who still uh, are playing games with us. The following, the CEOs of the following entities are put on notice. Just hold on. Because um, when I went out to campaign, I remember making one statement that was fundamental. I said in my administration, there will be no money to steal. And part of that journey of making sure that there is no money to steal is through this digitization. Because through digitization, we connect service delivery to revenue collection. And you can see for yourselves that because of digitization, especially of government services, and government revenue collection programs, we are seeing phenomenal increase in revenues. I gave an example the other day of KWS, 
you all remember um, what we did with the KWS. When we digitized KWS and insisted that they now must all get fees and services offered by KWS must be on e-citizen. We had a lot of pushback. The tour operators did not want it. KWS staff were reluctant. And I remember calling uh, Kanga and telling him, my friend, it's a fait accompli. The decision has been made. Get everybody to comply. There is no escape. Look at what has happened. In fact, those who are against the digitization of government services at the KWS, even orchestrated, you know, in our gates, long queues. Oh, you know, this system is not working. The tourists are not happy because now there is a long queue. Because tour operators were charging tourists $100 and paying government $50. And they didn't want a disruption of that system. Now what has happened? We insisted. The system is working. I listened to Aisha today from KWS. I listened to Susan. And they were giving us wonderful stories about success. In fact, they have reduced on the time is Susan here, the lady who spoke to me at the KWS desk? Is she here? And, uh, and Aisha, I don't know whether they're here. Yes, Aisha Kuja Pambele. So, and, uh, and Wanjiro, where eh, Wapi uh, Susan, there was also a lady, another Wanjiro lady there. So today, they were telling me that they have reduced the time they serve their clients from five minutes per client to two minutes. Where they were taking 10 minutes, they can now do it in five minutes. Yeah? So look at that transformation and explain to me what was that resistance about. Yes. Now, can you tell these people what you told me about what has happened to KWS? Your Excellency, uh, after onboarding our services to the e-citizen platform, we have enhanced our services. Our clients are happy now. We used to serve clients per client. We used to take 10 minutes. Now it has been reduced to five minutes for customers who are being served at the gate. Clients with prepaid ticket, we have a prepaid ticket. You can pay at your comfort of your house or home. It only takes two minutes to process the client at the gate. Susan, you told me something. Yes, sir. Your yes. Excellency, I mentioned that because our tickets have a QR code, the customer service team at the gates scan the QR code, and by doing so, they make sure that the card is valid. And at the point of exit, they also invalidate the card to make sure that it is not used again. It is not recycled, in essence. That means that we have reduced and closed the gaps on revenue uh, leaks in the service. And this has contributed to what Madam has said, that we have seen a growth in our income generation and revenue collection, Your Excellency. From 5.3 billion the year before we introduced a citizen to now 7. Point what, uh, Mr. Kanga? 7.6 billion. It means a whole 2 billion shillings used to end up in people's pockets. That is what, thank you very much, ladies. You are great people. Thank you very much. And this is the story across government in many departments. And we are going to be recognizing the people like KWS who have seen their revenues enhanced, grow, because they have embraced uh, e-citizen. 
there are government agencies that are still dodgy and I want to put them on notice. The National Cancer Institute of Kenya, Kenya Hospital Authority Trust Fund, Kenya Nutritionist and Dietitians Institute, Health Records and Information Managers Board, National Syndemic Disease Control Council, Occupational Therapy Council of Kenya, Digital Health Authority, you are a new entity, but you must comply. Kenya Biovax Institute Limited. I know the CEO, please tell him I am putting him on notice. Kenya National Public Health Institute. Kenya Health Human Resource Authority. Kenya Water Institute. Tanathi Waterworks Development Agency, Water Sector Trust Fund, Kenya Engineering Technology Registration Board, Kenya Ports Authority, Independent Police Oversight Authority, Private Security Regulatory Authority, Nairobi International Financial Center, Kenya Reinsurance Corporation, Financial Reporting Center, Kenya Institute of Supplies Management, Consolidated Bank of Kenya, Development Bank of Kenya, Kenya Accountants and Secretaries National Examination Board, Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, Institute of Certified Secretaries, Energy and Petroleum Regulation Authority, Kenya Power Company Limited, Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy, Geothermal Development Company, GTC, Kenya Petroleum Refineries Limited, National Defense University, the Kenya Space Agency, the Kenya Shipyard Limited. These entities have yet to comply with my directive that their services and payments and revenues must be on e-citizen platform so that Treasury can follow on the revenues that are being collected by government. They have one week to comply. They have one week to comply. Otherwise, they know what to do. They can make use of the door. It's as simple as that. Number two, we still have government agencies that yes, they have come to the citizen platform, but once in a while they retreat to go and pay or use alternative means of payments, including games with some banks. I want a record in the last three months of government agencies that are already on the e-citizen platform but have decided to use alternative means with gray spaces so that we can take action against the people who are doing, who are undermining transparency in the collection of public resources. Mr. Ocheng, I want that list on my desk in the next three days. Yes. We cannot continue to collect public money in gray areas and in dark corners. We said that 
all the 1,100 plus pay bills that were being used by all manner of entities, money that we were not sure whether it was ending up in public coffers, be closed. I am happy all of them have been closed. But there cannot be another route. We want a place where the public can know this is the portal where their money is coming. We can follow up on revenues for every public entity and we can know what citizens are paying for gets to the public coffers. I know those people are listening to me, the people who still want to play games, and I want to tell them there will be no escape for anybody to continue practices that undermine transparency in the collection of public funds. I call upon everyone and all Kenyans, as well as our partners and friends, to rally together and build on this success to make Kenya a global leader in digital governance, a hub for innovation, and a beacon of transparency and efficiency. The dream of a digital Kenya is no longer an aspiration. It is a lived reality that we do every day. And therefore, I want to commend the e-citizen team led by Ocheng. Can we have the e-citizen team people stand here? We give them a round of applause. Let us, to Apige Makofi, how are Kenya? They are, these are great Kenyans. Congratulations for doing a good job. And you have my support as you make sure that every government service is brought onto the digital platform and make sure that every cent paid by the government, by the people of Kenya, is not lost in between. It is also the reason why our rollout of um, our universal health coverage program, we insisted that to get rid of inefficiencies of the past, to get rid of the fraud and leakages of money meant for health in the past, we drive this whole universal health coverage on a digital platform. I am very happy with the progress that has been made in making it easy for claims to be assessed, making it easy for citizens to access services, and making it easy for us to deliver using a digital platform, including from registration all the way to services in hospitals and all the way to claims that are made. Today, uh, we are paying the claims that were accrued for October, making it possible that uh, we are paying, I think, 1.7 billion today. Reconciliation that would have taken months now is taking weeks because we are operating this on a digital platform. And we are going to get rid, for example, of claims that have been a backlog and a burden to hospitals. After they deliver service, they have to wait many months, sometimes many years. Some of the claims we are paying now are accruing from NHIF are a decade old. Some of them are 10 years, some of them are 15 years, because the system wasn't together. But those 15 year claims, we are now going to be paying last month, this month. We, every month we are going to be praying for uh, in the following month to make it efficient, to make it transparent, and to enhance service delivery so that hospitals that deliver service get their money, refunds, so that they can continue to deliver service. It is also the same reason why we are working now on making sure that our revenue collection is also brought into a very open digital space. 
I am working with the Kenya Revenue Authority together with partners to make sure that again our revenues collected by the Kenya Revenue Authority are not subject to the usual pilferage and losses. And um, shortly we will be at the place where a citizen is uh, today. When I said it a year ago that we are going to digitize government services from the 394 that were mentioned to then our target was 7,000. We have surpassed 10,000. We are now at 22,515. And it is my commitment that hopefully in the next couple of months, every government service must be on a digital platform so that citizens can enjoy efficiency, citizens can pay for services from the comfort of their homes, we get rid of physical um, challenges, we get rid of extensive travel, we get rid of long queues, we get rid of follow-ups that citizens have to travel back and forth to get government services that are obvious for every uh, citizen. We are looking into the future, as I said, moving this to the next level is to make sure that we also have a digital ID, we can pay for uh, government services. I am very happy that from, is it today or tomorrow, we are running the first pilot of paying our cash transfer on e-citizen. For those of you who follow this, we have close to almost two million people who benefit from our cash transfer program. I made two commitments on cash transfer. The first commitment I made in the last election was that I want these very vulnerable citizens, the aged, orphans, and people living with disability, to be paid as we pay salaries of public servants. They used to wait for eight months, six months. You know, I'm very happy that now we have implemented, we are paying as we pay salaries. That was my first commitment. My second commitment was that these very deserving beneficiaries had to queue in banks, travel many kilometers to be able to get their stipends paid. I committed then that we will work out a digital platform and pay them through alternative means other than banks. I'm very happy that the first tranche of that money, when are we going to pay uh, Motari? From tomorrow? Very good. So from tomorrow, we will begin to pay for, in, for those Kenyans on a digital platform. They don't have to queue in banks. They don't have to travel many kilometers. They can get their money from the comfort of their villages. Yeah? So um, it's another very proud moment for me as we accomplish some of the commitments that we have made and transform our country by making sure that government services, government delivery of government services, and for payments that citizens either have to receive from government or to pay to government is seamless, is efficient, and is fraud free. Imagine a Kenya where no one is left behind, where opportunity knows no barriers, and where technology bridges the gap to prosperity for every citizen. This is the Kenya we are building. And together, I mean together, we will make it happen. So I want to ask you and ask every citizen of our great nation to be a partner, to work with us in this journey, to look at the opportunities that are there, to play their role in making sure that we accomplish the mission that we have set for ourselves of making this country great. Again, let me ask ministries, 
departments, agencies. There, is, there are no two ways about it. We cannot have two rules. All of us must be transparent. Integrity of public services and public resources is foremost. That is a demand by the people of Kenya. It is not a request. And that is a right that the people of Kenya deserve. And it is our duty and responsibility to deliver on it. And I promise you, I am committed to it. And you are either coming along with me in making sure that we deliver on this commitment. I don't want to say what will happen if you don't. So thank you very much. This is a very proud moment for me that um, we are on course on making sure that Kenya moves uh, to the next level. Um, as I said, we are going to confound our critics. They, they will, I'm sure they will have nowhere to hide as we go forward. And they will know that we meant every commitment that we made. And we intend, I personally will lead in making sure that we deliver on every commitment we made to the people of Kenya because it is the least that we can do in making our contribution as leaders of the moment in taking our country to the next level. It is a commitment we made and it is a right that the people of Kenya deserve and it is a contribution that those of us who have the privilege to be leaders, it is our, ours to deliver on that, uh, on that commitment. So, Asante Nisana, I wish you well. I know there is a lot of work to be done in many other fields, and I look forward to working with all of you. Asante Nisana, God bless you. Thank you. Another round of applause for His Excellency. And Your Excellency, we now progress to the award ceremony. May we take our seats kindly. Let's take our seats. We'll progress to the award ceremony. So with your permission, humbly, Your Excellency, I'll request that you come back on stage. And the first award is in the category, well, we have two, we have corporate awards and individuals. And the first category is all-time highest transaction. And this one is taken by NTSA. NTSA are the all-time highest transactions. So allow me to welcome the CS, the PS, uh, Mohamed Dagar, and NTSA DG to come and receive this award on behalf of NTSA. Again, the National Transport Safety Authority, all-time highest transaction. And as we get a photo moment for that. The next one, as we take this photo, is the Directorate of Immigration Services. NTSA is a trailblazer in digitizing services by making all its services conveniently available online. It has enhanced end transport sector regulatory environment. Kenyans can now easily renew their driving licenses for Boda Boda, public service vehicles, or private vehicles from the comfort of their phones. They can easily obtain logbooks, transact in the buying and selling of motor vehicles, and pay for motor vehicle inspection, among other services. With 21,803 um, 623 transactions undertaken, we salute NTSA for truly embracing the digital highway. One more round of applause for them. 21,803,623 services. Sorry, Mwalimu Esabu, Mwalimu Amath. The runners-up is Directorate of Immigration Services. So if I may invite uh, the PCS, the PS uh, Julius Bitok and DG Evelyn 
uh, to also come. Now, the Directorate of Immigration Services is critical in facilitating international travel to and from Kenya. It issues passports to Kenyan citizens, enabling them to pursue their needs, aspirations, and desires beyond borders. It safeguards our national security interests by regulating the exit and entry points and ensuring only deserving foreigners obtain work permits and other documents permitting stay in Kenya. With 7,351,982 transactions on citizens, on e-citizen, uh, this uh, DIS has indeed uh, flown the globe of digital services. One more round of applause for them, please. The third award goes to uh, Most Improved Revenue Collection, and the winner is Kenya Wildlife Services. Let us have CS um, Rebecca Miano, PS Sylvia Museya, and DG Erastus Kanga to come and receive on behalf of KWS. Now, the institution has fully digitized its services and reaped impressive benefits from its endeavors. Its total revenue grew, uh, has grown for, uh, by nearly 50% to $7.6 billion in the uh, financial year 2023-2024 compared to the previous year. I'll repeat that, 50% to $7.6 billion in the financial year 2023 to 2024 compared to its three uh, previous year. Visitors to its sites also grew by around 1 million to close to 3.1 by the same period. Digitization has been a boom, boom. Visitors, both local and foreign, can conveniently pay for entry fees in advance and from the comfort of their homes or their phones. While visitors had to physically visit KWS offices for information on available tourist spots before, today they can do so online, giving them a wider choice of options. With more revenue generated, KWS has now more resources to dedicate to the conservation and better protection and management of our natural heritage. One more round of applause for them, please. We'll now go to the individual categories. And Your Excellency, we have a category, Senior Citizens, Oldest E-Citizen Active User. Esther Gadoni Mwangi is 84 years old. <laughs> Esther has been a consistent user of eCitizen. Only recently, she renewed her passport through the platform. She has embraced eCitizen as a convenient and reliable avenue for processing her logbook and submitting her vehicles for inspection. Hey! She is grateful that she no longer incurs the time and money traveling to Nairobi for these services and many more. One more round of applause for Madam Esther Gadoni Mwangi, 84 years. The next award goes to Samuel Kibunja Wainaina who is the oldest male citizen at 80 years old. He resides in Kikuyu, Kiambu County. Mzee Wainaina registered for e-citizen a few days after money and e-time saver saving platform. Why don't we put our hands again together for Samuel Kibunja Wainaina, who is 80 years old. Your Excellency, the next award is going to a couple that you met the first time when this was being launched here. Nicholas Ngunjiri Mwangi and Judith Jalagat Kemboi were privileged to be the first couple to process and obtain their marriage certificate on the relaunch of the e-citizen platform. His Excellency the President, His Excellency the President, and the entire government witnessed the colorful event at the uh, KICC grounds right here at Savo Ballroom. And I may request that we just play that video for those of us that thought ilikuwa nikipindi. By the public taking of these vows and the powers given to me under the Marriage Act, I now pronounce you Nicholas and Judith as husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. Congratulations.
The one thing that uh, stood up for me, it was uh, meeting the president. It was something I'd never imagined I would be able to get that opportunity. Tuli ni bamba yesi koni kukutana na president na kukutana na our prominent leaders. Kitu kenye si kwa itarajia. But this thing is real. Uh, this is a real couple. This is a real family. And, uh, and what everything they received was done. today, we can, we can pause the video. And what they received today, you excellent. The new look birth certificate that features a unique person identifier, UPI, also known as Maisha number, which will be lifetime identity number for Nicole. Nicole is the young one. And all other newborns who will receive their own UPI. Their marriage symbolizes the reality of e-citizens its convenience and that it truly works. Why don't we put another um, good clap for Nicholas Gojiri Mwangi and Judith Chelagat Kemboi. Thank you, Your Excellency. Next, Your Excellency would like to issue catalogs to the uh, CSAs that are present, so I'll request that they all may come. This catalog is a documented inventory of all ministries, counties, departments, and agencies, MCDAs, with their corresponding services, which have been digitized and are now available on the eCitizen platform. The catalog provides every cabinet secretary with a detailed list of all the digitized services in his or her docket and a quick reference to all other digitized MCDA services. So each will receive a catalog. This is a symbolic manual catalog, but there is a digital catalog that is available online. So if we can have each Cabinet Secretary, kindly hold the catalog as we have a photo op. I'll also request that we have all the PSAs present to kindly come on stage so that the next photo will be with the PSAs present, the PSAs who are in the house, if we may all just progress to come on stage. For a photo opportunity. So if the PSS can, so that we're not too wide, PSS can step back and take uh, in between, in between the CSs, so that we have a photo that will fit. PSS, if we can step back, yes, that's it. In between, just find somewhere in between where you can be viewed. And the last photo that we're going to have, if I can have SA, Mr. James Kianda, DG E-Citizen, Mr. Ochieng, DG Immigration, Madam Evelyn Chelagut, uh, Secretary, will have the CSS and PSS kindly to um, retreat. Secretary NRB, Secretary CRS, Commissioner Refugee Services, Mr. John Burugu, Coordinator IPRS, and Secretary NCM, Dr. Dan Opon. That's Mr. James Kianda. And together with them, may I also invite the two governors present, Governor Johnson Sakaja and Her Excellency Kawira Mwangaza, to also join in this photo. Thank you. I'll request that we retreat. Your Excellency, there is a gift for you. So if I may have the Prime Cabinet Secretary remain on stage together with the PS. 
uh, to present the gift to you before we finish with the anthem. And I'm sure we can all see the picture. If you can zoom in, it is His Excellency in his, not sure if it's Maasai or Turkana attire. It's done internally by Clinton Kitibai. Thank you very much, Excellency. Your Excellency will finish with the national anthem, so I request that we all be upstanding as we now finish with the national anthem. I request we all maintain our positions as we allow His Excellency to exit. Thank you. <laughs> 